the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to hang out and talk about what's going on in the world of sim racing, mainly following the news stories. I mean, that's what leads the show. Happy Friday to you out there. I hope you have a great week, and I hope this kicks off a great weekend for you. Um, it's been a really exciting, busy week in sim racing. There's a whole lot going on all across the board. So today, I'm going to have to be a little bit rapid fire to get through the news in a reasonable hour. I don't want to keep you all here too long. I want to get through the news and get out there and start getting to my weekend racing, which I have a lot going on on a personal level, just purely in the name of fun. I have no responsibilities this weekend. It's more about what do I want to do. So I'm really excited about that. What are your suggestions? I'll be watching the chat. What are your suggestions of what I should do this weekend for fun out on track? Anyway, I want to move on to the news right now. Before I do, I just want to remind you, any of the stories that I cover, I have all of the links in order that we discuss them at the bottom of the description of the show here on the Sim Pit. So again, if you want to get more details, because I'm going to blow through some of these stories, if you want to read the full article, see the full video, you can find those links in the description there. So what is going on in sim racing? And, and today, this is a big one. The Taco Bell Wars of uh, the movie Demolition Man. The Taco Bell Wars continue on as we are seeing fewer and fewer sim companies in our industry. Why? Because more and more of them are being bought up by big operation, big houses. So the latest news and this one is a mind blow. Um, Studio 397 is being acquired by Motorsport Games. Now, Motorsport Games and Studio 397, they've worked together on many a different eSport events. Motorsport Games being a, one of the monster companies in the eSport world. And uh, they just recently bought something else, didn't they? I, I, what is it they just recently bought? But um, Stephen Hood, previously Codemaster, you think Stephen Hood was one of the... the original main guys behind Codemasters F1, uh, what was the first year? I can't even remember what was the first year. What was the first year of Formula One games? Anyway, um, he is the president of Motorsport Games, and they are, in fact, acquiring uh, R-Factor 2, along with it, all of its assets, championships. Uh, there's talk of the R-Factor game engine being able to be sold to other companies, all of those kind of things. Now, that isn't the only news out of R-Factor. So are other projects going to use the R-Factor engine? Definitely. So they're still going to be selling the engine. It doesn't mean it's going to be proprietary or only used through motorsport games. They're still going to sell that out to others, which is good. Uh, will they continue to develop it? The firm answer to that is yes. We collaborated closely with motorsport games last year on Various events, the 24-hour Le Mans, Formula E race, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what else? Motorsport Games, they did, well, they've gone further than that. And let's see, opt-out public build. Okay, so there was also a new release. Uh, bah, 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 March, new build release. Today we're very pleased, this is on the 4th, to announce another new build update to R-Factor 2. Really great news as they talk about selling the, the company. Uh, the build deployed today, and next release of R-Factor, the Diria, the Diria, the Diria <laughs> E-Pre Formula E Street Circuit, which should be made available to purchase in the R-Factor Steam store, store uh, later on the day. That fourth opt-out, uh, new release, so yeah, lots of changes going on at Studio 397. So I, I started this by saying the talk about wars. I'm just, it's, it, it, I have to admit, I, I know that these companies have the right to make money. I know that that is the purpose sometimes when you create something, to make money and then hopefully maybe even make more money. I just, man, it's just, if Walmart owned everything you know this is the this is the concern of, of society now not to get political but if walmart owned everything it kills the brick and mortar store stores you've heard this age old uh 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 idea but i just right now we're getting to the point where all of our favorite sims are literally being sold to giant companies and the i don't know I don't know. I, it'd be a great time to be a sim developer right now. Uh, it, you know, if you're thinking of the, the guys over at Simbin, man, get something together just so you can, so you can sell yourselves. 
All right, moving right along. I racing. Mitchell De Jong scored a long-awaited Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup feature at Montreal. Congratulations to Mitchell. Great job. He's been the bridesmaid in this series many a times. Arguably the best sim racer on earth, Mitchell De Jong. Uh, and when and and we talked about this just uh, recently on a hot lap pump day, but. When you consider his ability to be at that excellence level in so many different disciplines, Mitchell De Jong, arguably the best. Uh, Verstappen is being the best. Best Verstappen and Enzo Benito take top honors in the iRacing Bathurst 12-hour top split. So congratulations to Team Redline and Verstappen, Enzo Benito. Great job by them. Ryan Lusa. Gets his uh, win in the iRacing series with a triumph at Las Vegas. So let's look at the points there on this one. Lusa. Uh, actually, we didn't look at the points on the Dijon thing. So with that win, there he is winning over Kevin Ellis, Tum Tumas Tatella uh, in third, Graham Carroll in fifth. In the points overall, Josh Rogers. Where did Josh finish? Josh Rogers finished in seventh place at Montreal. Uh, Rogers leading the way with 409. DeJong in second with 322. What a huge gap. Kevin Ellis in third. All right, back to the Lusa story. Lusa wins over Steven Wilson and Casey Kerwin. And our points as followed. Casey Kerwin leading with 88 points. No wins, by the way. Keegan Lay with 80 points and one win. The, the one win being part of the getting into the final shootout, right? Just like real-life NASCAR. And Ryan Lusa with 76 points. Actually, three drivers with 76 tied for third. Chris Shearburn and Corey Vincent. However, Ryan Lusa now has a victory under his belt. So congratulations to him. Um, so this is new news for iRacing. You know, iRacing has been doing something kind of interesting with their AI rollout. Um, and it kind of, it's one of those things that makes you actually kind of think. It's like AI. Most games just give you AI across the board. Uh, then you go the, race the AI, and you notice there's this like huge variance in their talent level at various different tracks. Like there's a lack of consistency in the AI. This is something that we've talked about in game reviews on on in at many a time over the years. Well, iRacing's been rolling their AI out combination by combination, whether it be tracks or cars or whatever, and now. The GT3s are coming to the AI, coming to iRacing for season 2021, season two. Uh, so the seven cars, the Audi R8, the BMW M4, the Ford, Ferrari 488, the Ford GT, the Lamborghini, Huracan, McLaren MP4, the Mercedes AMG. And so now you'll be able to practice against those, which is good. We're running GT3s next season, so I'm gonna need to be a lot better in a GT3 car. Maybe that's the best way to get up to speed. Um. All right, let's watch this again. Let's take a slip of the car. Coming March 9th. So we're four days away. I'm sure you've seen this. If you're a NASCAR fan, you are well aware of Bristol Dirt. Uh, I read an article today. How are they going to keep it down? 250 laps of Bristol Dirt. How are they going to keep the track in shape? Anyway, this is coming to iRacing March 9th in uh, Bristol Dirt. So that could be a lot of fun. We're definitely going to try that out. Uh, what else? What else? That's it from iRacing. Switching over to Assetto Corsa. They had a big event, their Ferrari eSport All-Star Racing Night featuring VIPs such as Valentino Rossi, David Tonisa, and Althea Boke. I, I, did I say? I'm sure I said her name incorrectly. Um, do I have to disclaim it? We'll say that. Uh, Alethea Boak. <laughs> I'm so bad at it. Anyway, uh, that did go on. Also, I want to mention this. The British GT, their friends at Fnatic, have put together this amazing 2,000 euro prize bundle for 2021 GT4 Esports Championship who will also win a real-world VIP experience and automatic esport entry. Um... So you can check that out as well. Again, links to everything I'm talking about are in the description here. A uh, new format for British GT. We're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, on the third, here's the all-star stream getting ready. And I thought I had results. I don't have results. Um, what if we go here? There we go. Here's Charles Leclerc. Let's 
It's not just a game. Come on, come on. Come on. Hey, skip. I, I, we're not waiting through a 20 second ad. We'll come back to it. Uh, also, uh, article here at GT Planet talking about Seto Corsa's update added a mysterious BMW M2 CS folder and the Ferrari 488 eSport liveries. Um, so that was something else included. Oh, look, they're about to play the same thing. Charles Leclerc from the All-Star. Stream starting. Can we just advance, please? There we go. Charles Leclerc on All-Star Racing Night. Um, all the videos, you'll be able to get the links there from uh, that Assetto Corsa article. So if you want to watch some of the all-star racing that went on, it is there and available for you. Um, I think that's about it there. Oh, oh yeah, I mentioned the revamped British GT Esport Championship joins SRO's Global Sim Racing roster. So there have been some slight changes in the way they're going to do this uh, British GT Esport Championship. Looks like a five-race schedule starting off March 21st, and then weekly from that point on, Olton Park, Snedderton, Brands Hatch, Silverstone, and Donington. Five-round, multi-class, GT4 wins Fanatic prize bundle that we showed you, and real-world intelligent money British GT experience. Okay. A uh, 60-minute race streamed live on Sunday evenings. That's when we're going to be able to watch, and you can pre-register there. So, a uh, cool championship going on there. I guess we could almost call this one of those sub-championship eSport championships, right? I mean, at that prize pack, I can't imagine Enzo Benito is going to get in there. Um, it might make it available to some uh, of our upper echelon drivers. This is kind of exciting to me. I mean, you know me. I'm a, a Nissan Z fan. Now, I was talking to John Hill. We talked about the 400Z, if that's the name to be. I'm not sure that's even officially the name. But there is a new um z car in the works and i i before i saw it myself i was asking john i'm like is it the old shape or the new shape and he didn't quite know what i meant i'm like well the old shape is kind of like a corvette with a driver all the way at the back of the car big engine in the front big long nose uh versus the new 300 model or 3 350 the modern z it's a more cab forward design anyway it looks like it's kind of a hybrid but a new update is also available on all platforms. This came out on the second for Project Cars 2. Update 4 includes various improvements plus a new track, free for all players. Read the update notes, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Added one new track, Lake Valley Speedway. Invites, blah, 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 um, um, wait, 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 hold on. Okay, here it is. Sorry, sorry. I, I screwed up my, my thing. So, Thank get you. into sideways action with four epic Japanese rides soaked in tradition and legacy. Race the 1985 Toyota Sprinter Trueno GT Apex 2000 Silvia, 2020 Nissan 370Z, and the 2021 Nissan Z prototype. I saw it somewhere referred to as the 400Z. I don't think that's right. Anyway, uh, apparently the first place in the world to have the newest Nissan is actually Project Cars 3. So what do you think of that? Uh, there's a shot of it, an image of it. Um, anyway, that's cool. Might be worth checking out. Might be good for some weekend fun if you own Project Cars 3. Pause the video, make sure we stop our audio. I don't think we had the audio playing. Um... Lake Valley Speedway uh, was the track that was added to Project Cars 3 in that update. Uh, Dirt 5 will be free on Steam from March 4th through March 8th, so we're already a full day into that. But if you want to try out Dirt 5 for free, there it is. So looking for weekend fun? Again, maybe that's one of the themes of today's show is weekend fun. Uh, if you haven't tried out Dirt 5, hey, it's always nice to try it out for free on Steam, March 4th through 8th on Steam. Live for speed, showing more signs of life. It's been a while, but this is posted by Victor. Uh, hello, racers. We are pleased to announce a new update with a lot of new features, fixes, and improvements. This is not the graphics update we've been talking about in recent progress. This one still uses the same physics system as public version and replaces, but allows a wider range of setup options for some of the cars. Anyway, uh, live for speed. I cannot wait to get back into live for speed. I'm just waiting on a couple more little things and it's going to be when i get back in i'm a little afraid that right now if i tried it out despite the improvements they've made 
that it's still going to just kind of feel a little bit dated to me. So I'm waiting for something that's going to wow me. I'm waiting for something that's going to make me want to get deeper into the sim, uh, not leave it on the shelf. But one of the all-time greatest sims ever made. I mean, I know so many of our viewers now are, are from this modern generation of, of sim racing. Uh, for those who don't know the name Live for Speed, this was one of the greatest sims ever built uh, by a very small development company. Uh, amazing sim. All right, Forza Motorsport. Rarely do we talk about them, but they are announcing their 2021 Motorsport Gaming Series powered by IMSA, the real-life IMSA. While the Rivals event is open to all players, those in the U.S. and Mexico can qualify for this tournament with the full details at that link. I don't think... I did the link, but you can follow the link. If you are a Forza ahead and you want to be at that higher level, this is a good one if you're, and it's restricted to U.S. and Mexico. Uh, GT Plan, oh, here, there it is. The 400Z makes its gaming debut in Project Cars 3. So there it is. Eh. Compared to my 240Z, that thing's butt ugly. Sorry, no offense, Nissan. But, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I see more resemblance. Nah, barely. That's such, yeah. That's cool. It's a cool car. It's just, again, the Z is sort of funny. I, I, it's probably like how a lot of Corvette, old school Corvette people feel about modern Corvettes. Maybe even 911 guys, too. Uh, mark this in your calendar if you own a Switch. But March 11th, you'll be able to play WRC 9 on the Switch as well. Um, so there you go. That's good news for those people. There's a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'll have a swig of coffee. I don't know what he's talking about. This is big. This is big. Group C cars are arguably the greatest era of racing, road racing in the world. Funny enough, isn't it also Group C is the greatest era ever in rally racing? I think it might be the exact same titling. Anyway, uh, Ritza Studios, better late than ever. Our AMS 2 February dev update is now live. Read all about it here. And greetings. It's hard to believe that it's already March. Time is flying faster than a sovereign Mercedes C9 set to max boost. Uh, anyway, uh, March is, for that reason, laying down the groundwork. Sunday, we saw the release of 1.1.2 update, uh, with, with, with a hot fix that already happened. And, anyway, we are now looking at the Group C cars. Oh, there we go. Um, in the game. Anyway, uh, AMS, AMS 2, cruising. Right along. Getting better every month, it seems. Uh, race Room. They did an update uh, that included some 911 liveries. Almost not really newsworthy, but I'm such a 911 guy. Anyway, uh, there's some new liveries to choose from if you go... Oh, there we go. We'll leave it right there. That's a nice looking 911 right there. Uh, Fanatec is still looking for a graphic designer. Send your CV and portfolio to hr at endor.ag. If you'd like to be a graphic artist for Fanatic, Fanatec, then uh, that could be a great job for you. And 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 uh, and you can give me my referral fee if you get the job. You can give me my referral fee for letting you know they're looking for a graphic designer. I know a lot of good graphic artists in my community, so I'm sure one of you is a shoe in for the job. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's close that. Uh, oh, I read this all over the place. So the new Need for Speed, I can, I don't even need to read it. I don't need to translate it. The new Need for Speed game has officially been delayed. And that's because Criterion Games has called all hands on deck to help finish with Battlefield 6. So until Battlefield 6 is finished, their entire place is not even thinking about need for speed they're thinking about battlefield so i don't have a date um on when it's going to happen but it looks like just straight up all resources are being diverted until then you can just hold your horses for need for speed uh iberia languages and traffic signs they're uh telling you you know when you're driving your euro, euro truck simulator 2 you're gonna need a, a translator you know, uh, you're not in Kansas anymore. 
Uh, so when you read these road signs, you are going to have to do some translations, interpretation to know where you're going in some cases, which is really cool. I mean, it's part of the authenticity of the game and uh, something that they're pointing out about their newer regions. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what's Tech Reader talking about? Uh, oh, big question. I know, I, I, I saw, I know, I know PS4 got a PS5. Uh, I guess it's been hard to get a PS5 or an Xbox. Best Buy apparently is going to have them in stock on Friday. Here's how to get it. So I guess you have to go through shenanigans. You have to create a bot. Excuse me. Anyway, um, I guess the, the wars for, uh, new consoles is on. All right, Gizmodo talking about Puma's new gaming shoe. Now, they say gaming, not driving. So what is the new gaming shoe all about? Looks like a driving sock to me, except for one thing. That heel looks just a little bit sharp to be a perfect driving shoe. It looks a little bit rounded, like it could be a pretty good driving shoe. I don't know. They're 100 bucks, it looks like, which seems pretty expensive for uh, something like that, a slip-on sock shoe. But... This could be a really nice option. I'm going to have to try to get a pair just because I like Puma stuff anyway and uh, see what I think of them. But anyway, what do you think of that? Would that be a good sim racing option? All right, another one that I didn't do the translate on. So this is 10,240 by 1440. How does he get to 10,000? Because to me, that's 3,800 and another 3,800, which is like... 7600 so i you guys do the math by 1440 oh wait is it no oh because it's not 1920 by 1440 is it what is the standard resolution on a single monitor running 1440 that's eluding my brain right now but anyway check out this simulator you guys look at this curve wrap around action he's got going look at that nicely built up rig and, oh, he's doing some uh, Mud Runner kind of driving. Anyway, let's get a, a view. Let's check it out. I should have put this right before the rigs that we're going to talk about. Oh, that's what it started with. Again, the link is here. game still doesn't work. That wheel still doesn't work on a snow runner. <laughs> Looks like it's working. Nice looking truck rig, huh? All right, what else? A uh, Swedish teenager built an affordable body tracking system for VR. Uh, with the help of J.A. Sweden, a nonprofit promoting student entrepreneurship, Anton Bill Manson and two friends founded a startup called Stonks. Can we, can we see it in action? There we go. This is the kind of stuff we've been waiting for. I don't know if you guys know this, but when I played... Uh, when I played Half-Life in VR, I broke my foot, or nearly broke my foot, trying to kick a head crab, just instinctive flinching. Uh, <laughs> well, that doesn't work so good, but hey, when we get some good body tracking and it built into games, it sure will. Uh, look at this, talking Nintendo life, talking uh, entertainment for the weekend, perhaps. Lawnmower game, racing review. Uh, <laughs> look at this thing. I'm not going to play it. It looks so cheesy. It looks so cheesy. Lawnmower racing game. Can you not go in this? We've got oh this. Oh god. By the way. No, they've all stopped. Apart from one person. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, HTC Vive. Oh, this is good news. HTC Vive seems to be testing, teasing, a hardware reveal. So... Just doing their typical, like, you know, just little things implying such a thing. So we might be seeing more from HTC in the near future. All right, let's look at a couple rigs, talk about some sim pit business, and then bring this show to a close. 
Rate my setup. This is posted by Jungle Stud. <laughs> Rate my setup. So how's that for a sim rig? You know, that is some messed up FOV. And not only is the... the you gotta get that monitor closer to the wheel, dude. And, and that would kill my neck. I gotta tell you. I like the wheel, though. I like the wheel for sure. Uh, here's one. This is the Volvo VNL 780. I have friends who've been in this boat. I have seen this real life, in person. Watch this. This is by Simracer de Rom Romania. <laughs> hey. Did I miss it? I was looking at something else. You guys see it? I missed it. Look at that! A sim rig in the back cab of his truck. I have friends who've done this. I'm impressed. I'm in ra impressed sim racer to Romania. Romania. Then we got this one. Uh, not the best, but I'm happy how my quarantine project turned out. Again, look at the use of space. This looks like to be under a stairwell. Um, he's got some champagne trophies and autographed rims and a helmet. This guy is the real deal. Uh, Softy Boy. Softy Boy posted this one. He's got his Ferrari hat and a lot lamp. Anyway, I love the uh, Harry Potter sim rig. Harry Potter under the stairwell. And then I just did this because I'll never... I appreciate these guys the most. Um, the people who will just do whatever it takes to be sim racing. You know, before I was a reviewer, before you know, I, I didn't have any money. I had some pretty pretty tragic gear at times. Uh, you do what you got to do to sim race. And this is what you got to do if you're a stress manager. He presents his own humble budget setup featuring a DFGT, a traditional wooden armchair minus the arms, and Mr. Wobbly Desk. <laughs> oh, I hope you get an upgrade for your birthday or Christmas, buddy. But good for you. And that takes me to... Um, actually, that takes me to... Have we congratulated our champions? I'm going to do a formal uh, champions uh, ceremony. I think would be the best word, but I want to congratulate because uh, our, our Simpit GT series, GTE series, did come to a wrap. Gonzalo Perone was the champion there. Randall White finishing in second. Kevin Burrows finishing in third. I missed it by that much, finishing in fourth place. Also, on the oval side of things, um, sorry, I didn't have these at the ready real quick. Oval side of things, Nick Boyd has clinched the championship. Here we go. Nick Boyd has clinched the championship with 317 points over Mark, four-time champion Michkowski over David Clymer are our top three finishers in the Simpit Oval Series. I'm going to have announcements on both of those just here in one moment. And then finally, we have wrapped things up in the Tuesday Night Thunder, the Tuesday Night Sprint Car Series, with Billy Strange, uh, Billy Strange Racing and Sim Pit working together. And it was Tyson Landis. Oh, look, season two's already gearing up. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was Justin Sherman winning the championship with Tyson Landis finishing in second, Billy Strange finishing in third place. Also, we are giving away this season a hard charger award that did go to Tyson Landis. He gained... 13 positions in the feature at Lima Land. And the rookie of the season goes to Mark Michkowski, who finished in fifth place overall. So the, our three big championships are uh, have finished up. Uh, Mustang and Rally Championships still live strong. Uh, but what I do want to do is, and I want to announce the Simpit Friday Night Fun. So tonight we don't have a race. Andrew White has been kind enough to host an event. If you want to race with us in the Xfinity Cars at Chicagoland, That'll be about 5 p.m. Pacific time. The password will be given out in our Discord channel. So you're going to want to type in exclamation mark Discord, get into our main channel, join the group, and we'll give out the password this evening, and you can come race with the gang. In addition to that, we do have the March patron race coming up, a practice race on the 14th, and the official race on the 20th utilizing Sim Racing GP and Assetto Corsa. Um, so we got this going on 
coming up in the near future as well. That's for our patron group. Again, patron are the group who help support the Sim Pit, and we do a race each month to honor that group. In addition to that, we do have the Sim Pit Truck League. So we're moving from Friday night to Thursday night. Sign-ups begin on the 12th. The season begins on April 1st, and this is going to be more of a development series. So last season was a little rough. We had a lot of incidents. We had a lot of really good drivers and a lot of new drivers uh, crisscrossing. We're going to do a little work to rebuild the group and kind of get things uh, and help guys get up to speed. So maybe if you're looking for a beginner league, the Simpit Truck League is the one for you. Sign-ups begin March 12th. Do a search for Simpit Truck League or get into our Discord. Find more information there. And our GTE series is converting to a GT3 league this season. Seven cars to choose from. And sign-ups on that one are also going to begin March 12th with season beginning on the 4th. Those are Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock uh, in the morning as well. Uh, I mentioned Patreon. That's one way to support the show. Another way to support the show is Simpit merchandise. We have a bunch of cool merchandise available through our Streamlabs merchandise store. I have a link here in the description for it. You can see this shirt that I'm wearing right now. Uh, thank you, Amir, for this great design. This is this month's. There's only 20 days, 22 hours to be able to buy this shirt. We might bring it back again. I don't know. But when it's over, it's gone. Gone forever. You can always have Simpit shirts and other things available. Another great way to support the show. So if you want to help us stay in business, you can just buy a shirt, get a cool shirt, show the people you love the show, and give us a few bucks to help keep the lights on as well. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's show. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to The Sim Pit here at YouTube if you want to see more reviews and DIYs. We have a new review of the Slim Box by Rick Motek coming out probably tonight, so you're going to want to uh, subscribe for that. And if you ever want to watch my personal racing, all of my personal racing is done at Sim Pit Live on YouTube. So check that channel out as well. Other than that, get out there, do some sim racing, and have a great weekend. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track. Oh, I got to press the button to go. Have a great weekend, everybody.